Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Today, we're going to be taking a look over here at the Bitcoin price chart and the altcoin market as we get back from a holiday weekend or an extended weekend to see what the cryptocurrency market is up to, the state of where we're at. And we're going to run through a lot of different things in this video just to kind of recap after being off for four days. On Thanksgiving, we saw the price of Bitcoin exceed $38,000. Now, as we get ready to kick off the week, we're back at $37,000. Lots of volatility there throughout the altcoin market. But for the most part, the market still just really kind of remains where we were at last week. Some of the things we've been talking about have been total two or the altcoin market being in Wyckoff accumulation, working on the sign of strength phase, as we could see, still continuing to work that out here on total two. The story is the same over here on total three in the sign of strength phase remaining unchanged, but still continuing to work that out. And the story is the same over here on the total market cap, working right there through sign of strength. So those things all remain unchanged. A lot of times the things that do change are our emotions. We go through a period where prices are up practically every day. The expectations get set for that to continue. The market stalls and then sentiment shifts, boredom, anger, frustration, impatience, all those things end up coming into play. But absolutely nothing has been acting out of line in here. Just that the market stalled at the top of the range as these things have a tendency to do before they can end up working another leg to the upside. So we still sit here waiting on these market caps, which all still look exactly the same, completely unchanged from where we left last week. And well, the story is really true over here for Bitcoin as it still continues marching up in its little bit of a grind. Now that it's been in here so long, it starts to get me to question whether or not, hey, are we still in like early phases of this? Are we kind of getting deeper into this, deeper into the march? Maybe the march just isn't as aggressive. As we all know, I'm, my thoughts have been more that Bitcoin's going into a retrace rather than a full-blown bull run. Maybe this is a little bit of evidence evidence of it that it's not exhibiting massive strength, whereas in this circumstance, you would already be up in here into the 41s and 42s, but instead hitting 38s, 36s, and 37s. Either way, really nothing has changed over here on Bitcoin. The slight grind to the upside has just still been continuing here. We're now going on over a month. We're now at a month and four days of still continuing to grind through here. Every dip, the bears celebrate that they're going to be victorious on 12k. I know with uh, this one right here, this is where Binance settles with the Department of Justice. The bears and the 12 cares came out in full force only for it to go back up to over $38,000 in the next couple of days. But nothing has really changed in here except for just a slow grind and continued march up here for Bitcoin. So that's good because it still leaves the door open for us to keep the march on going. As I've talked about in past videos, the things I'll be looking for that would signal signs of concern for me would be if we're still just continuing 2016. You guys have undoubtedly seen all of this before. The price action that we've exhibited for the last nearly three years has been right on point uh, with 2014, 15, and 16. Even this peak 299 days later happens within hours. The breakout happening 699 days later happening within hours. And then, of course, we leave our range right at the same time and now just keep on marching on sideways. So 2016 still, we can't say it's not it, right? We definitely have price similarities to 2020, but this definitely can't be ruled out. And I'm not going to lean either way on having a strong bias for either one, merely because no matter what, when time arrives, we seem to do things right when we are supposed to. And so while I'll definitely cheer for this to keep going and hope that this is the case that does end up happening, it's always in the back of my mind that this thing still exists. The timing has just been right on cue. There's, there's no question about it. This is, of course, also where uh, all the content creation out there of everybody hedging themselves and what they're willing to say, bull or bear, uh, you can go on to Twitter now. Essentially, everything has flop, flipped over there to everybody is a bull. Everybody is a genius. Everybody's smart. They, of course, do that when the market is in greed, as we could see in the last couple of years. It's the highest greed we've had. Now everybody's a bull. Everybody knows their stuff. But as we all know, the case is to be a bull while everybody's a bear. So we just have to keep kind of waiting on Bitcoin to give some more signals on uh, where we're at. Again, these altcoin market caps, even the total market cap, total three, beautiful, total two, perfect. You know, if I had imagined these things to continue on and to continue pushing up, you would certainly think that Bitcoin's going to be joining that party, that Bitcoin's not going to be falling down, doing one of these things and continuing back to the support levels of $31,000, $32,000. 
it would seem for these things to continue on, which they structurally look like they want to, that Bitcoin would be joining that party. Uh, but we are having with that idea of thinking, hey, we're going to keep moving up there. Total altcoin market cap continuing to push on. It's going to require Bitcoin likely to keep pushing on. And then that also requires we deviate from here. So the patience game just continues for Bitcoin, continues for the altcoin market. And we've really just reached a level where we're stuck and it would be expected that we'd get stuck here. We've talked about this, the sign of strength. They can waddle sideways for quite some time in here. Once you work your way back up to the peak of that, it's not unusual that we've even been in here this long or that we even stay here longer. That is a typical stall out level. But otherwise, no signals of gloom and doom. And I think for that, we'll take it. The things I'll be looking for, if things do start getting gloomy, doomy, and sketchy, of course, is one, the back test of the top of the range. We see that happen in every single recovery for Bitcoin that we back test the top of previous ranges. This always happens. So being mindful of the top of the range of a back test in the event, this doesn't just continue marching up in here. That should just be fully expected as completely normal. The place where it doesn't get normal, the thing where it starts to get kind of sketchy is if we actually go below there. If we start seeing 28s and 27,000s, it opens up this can of worms, which we've talked about for the last couple of years there with Bitcoin, with Ethereum. I have stated it for the last year and a half. Even the ultimate gloomer and doomer bear for Bitcoin should have had in their thesis to at least go back to $38,000 because in the ultimate bear doom scenario, that's where you head to. That's where we're at right now. And while it's kind of a pivotal moment to say, hey, we got to go a little bit higher to start ruling out ultimate doom. So if we fell back below, as we can see in here, we go take back out support levels and head back into lower levels that will deviate away from every recovery of Bitcoin throughout history and open up that can of worms that things are not good for Bitcoin in the long term to go along with the stock market. So we'll touch base on the stock market and metals here in this video briefly in a minute, but it's also important to remember this, right? So we're at this really big crossroads in the market. You know, the last year and a half for me, it's been about getting back into retracements, getting back into retracements. And now we reach the crossroads of the multiple different levels in these retracements where things can get sketchy. Right here's the first one, $38,000. It lines up for this scenario right in here. We have to get through here in order for this to not be the completion of wave B for a very large ABC correction happening in here for Bitcoin. This is where things would come to an end at this level. So continuing to get through, of course, important, but being mindful that, hey, it's it's typical to stall out and it's typical to come back and back test the support levels. The, where, the place where things fail, right? We start losing 2020 in the event of going down and setting lower lows. I would think if we head down into below $34,000, becomes pretty clear that we started deviating away. And then when we start losing 2016 and losing recovery behaviors is when we start closing and accepting below low, you know, $30,000. If we start accepting prices and closing candles down in the 28s and the 29s, hey, there you go. Uh, the problem with it all is that, you know, by the time we get there, in the event that that occurred, the sentiment of the market would be totally different than it is today. It would be screaming, it would be yelling, it would be toxicity, it'd be anger, it'd be like, well, well good job, Captain Hindsight, we're down here, now you know it. <laughs> but we can talk about it a long time leading up to it. Uh, but again, that, that's not going to be validated that, hey, we have something like this going going on or that we've broken away from what recovery cycles look like until you really take out that $31.8,000 and close below it. And it's totally typical to have wicks that go below there. It's totally typical to see, you know, something like $30,000 in a crazy wick of capitulation and liquidations, but a quick recovery would be really important. And in the event that we just kind of go down to $29,000 and hang out there for a day or two, that would probably signal some pretty bad stuff there for the crypto market and, and there for Bitcoin. And it's important to talk about these just because we're at the crossroads of it. And we've talked about this for so long. This is the level. This is what we always talked about with Ethereum in the event that Bitcoin was going to like $3,000. We're there right now. Make your bet, place your bets. What do you think is going to happen? I don't have a percentage to tell you a likelihood of it occurring or not occurring, but I can tell you this idea, this theory, crash retrace reaccumulation, 4.236 extension with five waves, crash retrace reaccumulation, 4.236 extension, the retrace, you're at a retrace level. Congrats to everybody who has flipped to bull right now. This is probably the time to say, okay, we're at a crossroads now. We hope for things to keep marching on, to keep pushing forward, bring a ton of excitement to the market. 
we know that we can actually pull back from here and that actually still be completely normal based on what we've done for the last three years. But we do also know where things break and things don't look right anymore. And that's in the event that we go closing lower prices in the 28s and 27s, as that is going to deviate away from every recovery we've ever had for Bitcoin. But otherwise, Things are okay, but we're always gonna bring those up while we sit here at the crossroads. We're at the $38,000 level. Let's go marching through it and let's start saying, hey, you know what, things look different. But as I posted over here on August 12th, and of course I've shown you guys videos talking about this for the last two years. I've been a bull on Bitcoin all year. Anyone who follows me knows it. But as the retrace gets in motion, it's time to start drawing out scenarios over here. There's many types of retraces with FIB levels, but one that nobody has on their bingo card for Bitcoin is literally that going back to $38,000, right? And so what we see is we see greed enter the market. We see all the content creation of people hedging themselves to say, we're going to 12K, 23K, 20K, 16K, blah, blah, blah. Now they're all bulls. Where do they become bulls at? Right here, <laughs> right? right where we said uh, that that level is at. And so we've got to get through here. We know where we can do things that would be totally acceptable based on Bitcoin's price behavior historically, which is a revisit of a previous peak of a range, because that's what it always does. We always go back and revisit these ranges, especially there in 2014, 15 and 16, the range that we're talking about. We see we come back and back test the top of the range. Hopefully we just keep the march on going. We keep the dream alive. Everything gets real rowdy. Uh, but I'm going to be, you know, kind of like this as we're back into these retracement levels of like, hey, look, you know, I gave you a year and a half of being like, hey, we're going to go up. We're we're going to go up. We're going to go up. We're going to get back into retracement levels. Now it's about pinpointing all those retracement levels and all those levels that are the, the big concerns. And this is step one. This is phase one. It's not something we haven't talked about. We've talked about it for a long time. We've got to get through it. And my job is not to come in here and terrify you, <laughs> right? I'll just show you all the things that I do see and you, you can kind of decide what do you think? Do you think this thing is going to keep marching up and go wild? Do you think it's still just going to follow 2016 and keep marching along, back testing the top of previous ranges? Or you think this is the end of Bitcoin? Game over. <laughs> That's up for you to decide. I'm waiting for the market to give me clear signals. And for me with clear signals, it requires prices to fall drastically. And by that time, most people will be pretty mad and pretty upset. And that means if we get down to $27,000, $28,000, that's where I would say, all right, I think we've uh, validated uh, Bitcoin's not following its stuff. Otherwise, as of right now, this is still this is still what's in the cards. Moving on to things like XRP. XRP still working back to the support level of the breakout that it had there above 54 to 55 cents while accumulating in there for a year and a half. We've talked about this when you had this back in 2016 and 2017. That's what it was doing in here. It was coming back to back test the top of the range. You can see the top of this range has not been tested after this break. We'll see if we can end up getting it right in here. That would be about 54 and a half to 55 cents. As the week kicks off, we have the stock market. It has been favorable for us. Fortunately, that has been a requirement for Bitcoin. You can just see how high this NASDAQ has worked its way back up, getting very close to all-time highs. Not quite there, but we spent quite a bit of time talking about this over the last several weeks. The NDXT of the NASDAQ 100 technology sector index getting through its 702 retracement last week. Now continuing this week, we do have a slight green day here to start the week off up 0.16% as the markets have opened. Very nice technical level for the bounce to come in in here and send this thing to the upside again. We talked about this last week, distribution. If this thing does set new all-time highs, these aren't typically the structures you get of where things just go raging into a bull run. It is usually that we are just going to set a new all-time time high by a slight amount, and then it rolls back on over afterwards. But either way, in the short term, if this is the condition that we have, which we talked a lot about last week, this is favorable for Bitcoin too. But the big one is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, because when we go back through history and look at all the breakouts, it has been way more correlated with those all time high breaks for the Dow. Again, it's that same setup that you see over there in the NDXT that this would actually still just be a distribution phase for the Dow, but a new all time high. Hey, that's the great condition. That's what we look for. Still, we don't have the sign from it just yet. But we do know that the Dow has gotten through all of its retracement levels and just trying so hard to get its way out and get into that all time high. But last week closed above the 786 retrace, starting this week off slight down 0.23%. Still waiting for more as this fight between the Dow and gold rages on. But again, I've written a newsletter about it and I've talked about it in several videos that is Bitcoin tech or is Bitcoin money? The narrative, the story, the fantasy with Bitcoin is money. 
but you look at the price action of Bitcoin with tech, it tops and bottoms with tech. So this is a good sign for us to keep this thing going. Either way, as we kick off the new week and we get things going, everything looks okay in the crypto market. Really just a lot of waddling back and forth here in the sign of strength phase for a lot of these market caps. And Bitcoin still continues to set the higher highs and higher lows. We talk about the things that would create concerns of things to change. And if those things changed, would there be a bigger picture validation to go along with it? But as of right now, it's still higher highs and higher lows in Bitcoin. Everything is looking fine. And we have positive signs coming from the stock market right now. And nothing has started to fall apart yet. Those things could always change. We'll address them if they do. But as of right now, these are the things that we're looking for and they look positive. So hopefully these phases can wrap themselves up sooner than later. Either way, Prices are not acting out of expectations on how we thought they would. So as we kick off the new week after an extended holiday break, market's looking just fine, waiting for some more direction, and Bitcoin continues its higher highs and higher lows. I hope that you all had a wonderful weekend. I ate a lot of food. I did a lot of activities. <laughs> it almost didn't feel like a vacation because there was never really a moment of rest. But things have definitely quieted down in the house again, and it feels good to be back. So I'll check in with you guys in the next one. And I want to thank you so much for watching. If you're looking for something to do, of course, you could check out my website over here, bcbacker.com. This is a course I put together with over 40 videos and over 11 hours of content in here, deep diving into the historical behavior of the cryptocurrency market and teaching you how to set up your own charts and your own indicators within TradingView and CoinTrader Pro. Teach also about Elliott Wave Theory and Wyckoff accumulation in here and go through a lot of the lessons learned throughout the market after being in this crypto market for over six and a half years. It's 39 bucks, one time, no recurring fees, no, no subscriptions over here on bcbacker.com. I do also write a newsletter over here that is subscription-based at blockchainbacker.substack.com. The most recent one was talking about percentage drawdowns in the altcoin markets and whether that correlated to new all-time highs or percentage gains. There was definitely a correlation there between whether or not an asset pulled down a tremendous amount or had a more shallow pull down and if it was able to go set a new all-time high again. But in the one prior to that too, also talking a lot about the developer data in which I brought on sentiment last week so they could tell you guys about that and you could access that data. Both of these newsletters are published over here on blockchainbacker.substack.com. There are links to both down here in the description of this video to bcbacker.com and to blockchainbacker.substack.com. Otherwise, guys, welcome back from the holiday weekend. Couple more weeks and then we've got more holidays coming. Till then, we'll keep crushing it and hopefully we have a great end to 2023. But on that note, I'm wrapping it up. Thank you so much for watching. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor, but if you ever need a pick-me-up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.